Hello, it's Mark from Lightmap. I'm here to show you the improvements to the interface in HDR Light Studio 8. Okay, the first thing is if we come to the Light Properties panel, we'll see that there are two tabs now for the settings. There's the General Settings and then there's the Appearance. We made this change because the panel was getting so long, users were spending too much time scrolling up and down the panel to make changes to their settings. So now we can tab between them and instantly get to the settings for the appearance or the more general settings, which are primarily transform settings. Due to other changes that I'm going to show you in a minute, we think you'll be able to spend most of your time with this tab on the Appearance tab. OK, in older versions of Light Studio, there was a panel called Light Controls. This has now been retired. This has been replaced with the new stuff that I'm going to show you now. So in HDR Light Studio 8, we have expanded the Light Paint system. Light Paint is active when you have the little light paint tool active in the corner and this is default for all of the views, the render views and the canvas. Coming on to the view, what's changed? So in this view I'm in move mode, reflection, light paint method and as I uh, click in the view or if I drag in the view we can position that light and this is what you're used to. OK, if I come to this drop down here and change to move relative, I can now drag in the view and make small adjustments to the position of the light by dragging. It's actually ignoring anything to do with light paint and it's just letting me make little adjustments. If I come down to the canvas, this is more obvious. If I have the normal move mode and I just click in the view or I drag in the view the light jumps to the location where I'm clicking. If I use move relative I can click anywhere and then it would just take the mouse input to make an adjustment based on the current position. So it lets me just slide the light around from where it already is. So why do we need this? Well if I use the normal move mode using the light paint say I have the light up here and I want to move it up a little bit as soon as I hit the rim of that object the light jumps right up to the top because it catches that little edge now if you have a model with different edges and pointing in different directions you're going to get that happen to you so if we use the move relative mode once I've got the light where roughly where I want it we can just do a nice little amount of dragging just to reposition that light using move relative. So that's move relative. You'll have noted already that each of these views has their own light paint mode. So in this view we have move and then this view could be set to move relative and we could use this view just for making small adjustments. So when we change the mode, you'll notice that the cursor changes. So in this mode here, it's just the move tool. If we do move relative, we've got move with a little R next to it so you can see that. You'll also notice at the bottom of the panel, there's always some kind of hints of what you can do with this tool. So any additional uh, keyboard qualifiers that can be used to change how it behaves. So for example, if I go to the move tool, we'll see that we can press the shift button to lock horizontally. So if I press shift and then I'm now using light paint, but it will only adjust the position horizontally within the HDR there. So that's quite handy. And then if I press control, we're now locking vertically. So as I use light paint on the model, we use it to just change the vertical position of the light. 
okay right let's look at another mode rotate that's pretty straightforward I just hold and I drag and I can rotate the light you'll see that there is a hint here that if I use the alt key I can make a finer adjustment so it makes it less sensitive so press alt and then as I drag it will change it by a smaller value for making finer adjustments okay so let's reset the rotation of that light double click on the label we'll reset that okay so let's go to the scale just click and drag and we can change the scale we can use the keyboard qualifier to do a finer adjustment free scale I'll actually change the mode over here as well so in free scale if I click and hold as I drag up I change the height left and right I change the width and I can do both together so we can just scale the light to any ratio that we want in any size so that's really handy and then we have brightness so by dragging in the view I can change the brightness now you'll notice on when I'm not using the tool it gives me a little tip as I start using the tool it shows me the value and it shows me where it can the percentage change in that value um, so if I want this light 50% of the brightness I keep hold I drag till it gets to 50% and I know I've reduced the brightness in half in terms of brightness I still think using the uh, brightness slider is very useful with the uh, large plus and minus I can take up the brightness a whole f-stop or down a whole f-stop or using the small plus and minus I can alter it by one third and I just like the feel of using this slider for my brightness uh, the brightness slider shows all the time uh, it doesn't matter whether you're on the settings or the appearance this is a very important thing to have access to all the time and we've kept that visible at all times okay so each of these views has their own light paint mode you can pick this from the menu down here and they can all have a different mode we felt this was really important because this means you can do things like this you could have let's say this view free scale let's say this view brightness and this view move so with this light selected I can move this light to where I want I could come to this view change the width of the light by dragging I could come to this view drag to the left and reduce the brightness using the up and down arrow let's pick the next light I can then come to this view move that up here I could come to this view and make the light taller by dragging upwards and then come to this view and turn down the brightness by dragging to the left sometimes you'll just want to use the sliders and that's fine um, they're excellent for making a finer adjustment and feeling a little bit more in control but very general adjustments to the lighting you can now do all of these directly in the views so in showing this to you every time I've come down to this little drop down and that's a bit tedious so what we have is keyboard shortcuts for all of the different modes that are available uh, these are based off QWERTY basically so all the keys are near each other uh, it's very easy to use easy to memorize uh, they're fixed at the moment you can't uh, do your own assignments of the keyboard shortcuts this is what they are uh, so you would need to learn them but this means when I'm in this view I when the cursor is in this view if I press Q 
it will change this mode in this view to brightness. If I come to this view and I press R, it will change it to scale. So where the cursor is active, when you press that keyboard shortcut, it will change the mode only in that view. And this makes it really easy to use because I can come over here and go, I want to move the light in this view. I want to come over here and I want to change the brightness. Down here, I want to use now free scale. Let me scale that differently. So it gives you a lot of choice over how you set up your views. And if you just want to work in one view, you can do everything from one view by just using these keyboard controls. These keyboard controls are also consistent with the new scrim light. So as the cursor comes into the scrim light panel, W is move, E is rotate, R is scale, T is spread. So if one of your lights in this view is an area light, if I pick this light, right click, toggle area light, and we'll see in the list now it's added smart dolly, which is alt W. I can drag to the left to reduce that, bring the light closer to the model until we see the light there. All of the same controls work for lights that are area lights. And you'll see over here, this is all in sync in Cinema 4D. As I scale the light in this view, it gets scaled over here. I can move the light. I can change its brightness. This all happens in real time. Then I can scale it down. I could free scale, shift R, so I'll make it taller. I will do Alt W for Smart Dolly. And if I bring it really close and then just use T, that is my spread setting. So if I bring that down, I should be able to focus that light As I take that further away, do Alt W. You can see the appearance has changed there because the light is more focused. Um, if I change to T to change the spread setting and I put that all the way back up again, you'll see the light is hitting more of the model because I've changed the spread of the light. So this list updates based on all of the settings that are available for that light. So this is added smart dolly, is added spread. And again, those shortcuts, the spread shortcut is T over here, uh, the spread shortcut is T also. So once you learn these shortcuts, you can use them everywhere in Light Studio. In the drop down, you'll also get added special light paint modes related to the light you've got selected. So at the moment we've got the scrim light is active and if I click on scrim light position, uh, come to this view, if I click on the model, I am now moving the position of that scrim light. So if I just um, smart dolly that away a little bit, it's a bit too close to the model. so. If I Alt W, Smart Dolly that away. Okay, and then I use this special mode, Scrim Light Position. I can click on that model. And where I click is actually positioning the light relative to the scrim. Um, so that gives me a lot of control. So if I press Q, I can take down the brightness of that whole light. And then the only way you can get to the special modes is using the drop down. There's no keyboard shortcut for those. So scrim light position, and then I can just position that within that area light. Now, if that light was not an area light, if I right click, toggle area light, the light's now back on the HDR, and we still get the same feature where we can position that light within the scrim. 
okay other special modes are motion blur if you've got the motion blur filter applied to a light you'll see motion blur in this list and you'll be able to position the direction either in the render view using the light paint mode or directly on the canvas okay so that concludes the overview of the improvements to the user interface we have tabbed the light properties and as you can see most of the time I left that on appearance and I was able to light this model with the addition of all the extra light paint controls in these views the light controls panel has been retired that's been replaced with all this new functionality directly in the view okay thanks for watching this demo of the new UI and we hope you enjoy using it